Greetings everyone, 3D Hero here and welcome to today's latest mix of builds to where today I'd like to present a very odd build that I've come up with that practically works great for knocking out monsters but using a weapon that's not designed for carrying monsters which makes this even more fun to try out I'd like to present my knockout ignition greatsword build that works perfectly if you're someone that wants both damage, extended vulnerability against monsters and a bit of fun every now and then so as the name of the build states, you're going to be using a great sword of your choice to do a simple hit and run tactic with your crit draw skills that will allow you to activate your special Odogawan armor skill that every time you draw your weapon and hit a monster, you'll be able to do knockout damage to them and then repeatedly hit the monster over his head to get KO effect and then you do a strong charge or a true charge attack on the vulnerable monster and thus repeat the process over and over again to the monster's slate I've also combined this build with the impact mantle to increase the amount of times I could pull off a KO effect onto the monster's head which honestly makes this build even more stupid but fun as you can get around 3 to maybe 4 max KOs but getting a 4th is highly unlikely as you tend to slay the monster before a 4th activates so honestly with this build here if you're going to run this setup make sure you also have the impact mantle so you can pull off even more KO effects onto the monster but if you don't want to you can always go ahead and use the rocksteady mantle or whatever mantle you want to as if you use the set on the zone bare bones with nothing else you can pull off maybe one or two KOs depending on the monster you're facing and depending on how vulnerable the head area is so you can always hit it repeatedly but this is kind of what I run with and this is kind of how it's played out for me and I find that it plays even more better with the impact mantle and this setup in one so it's a pretty simple but fun build to try out if you're someone that enjoys trying out new things that aren't designed around meta or speed running habits Though with you tinkering around with the build, you could actually make it work very well for speedrunning purposes, but nothing too short or great. Now, just to say that when it comes down to knocking out monsters, it won't always knock them out successfully after a few hits, as every time you KO a monster, their hidden KO meter that every monster have will be reset and extended, which means you need to land X amount of hits on a monster to down them again. But that's not something you have to worry about, as at best, if you manage to land a second or third KO, then the monster you'll be facing will generally be near death anyways and like I said before, if you use impact mantle you can increase your chances of KOing a monster if you don't, then at best 2, maybe 3 KOs at max you'll be able to land on the monster but anyways, right onto the build the weapon of choice here is the new Wyvern Ignition Greatsword as it looks great but it also has a very high base damage when you first pick it up which can be further increased with a non-elemental jewel or an attack jewel or whatever and also it has a tiny bit of white sharpness which is a extra 1.32 multiply to a weapon which is kind of nice for an extra damage boost the weapon also has a minus 15% affinity but with armor set I'm wearing which is a mix between Odegaron and Basil's I managed to lower it down to having 5% affinity so instead you're going to be doing extra damage overall augmentations I would say go with affinity as you want to lower the minus affinity down and then either go with a attack augmentation to increase the weapon's damage a bit more or go with a extra slot augmentation so you can add in a extra critical eye or an extra attack jewel that you know will help you in the long run now remember you don't have to go with this great sword as any other great sword with good damage and sharpness and affinity will work very well for you like Jaguar's Hacker, Leviathan's Fury or Giant's Jaw Blade any of these three and others are generally good as long as they fit the role for you and as long as they play good for you and for the build so for the following skills being used I focus on landing quick attacks on a monster's head through a hit and run tactic and using every opportunity I have to keep hitting a monster until I KO them to where I would then charge up and do a crit draw true charge attack and repeat the process overall you're going to be doing a lot of crit draw attacks to get the KO effect to kick in so this is what the skills I went with and they all generally vary and this is something where you can also if you want to change and adapt it to your own fighting styles so if you're someone that wants to focus more on true charges, there's literally room for that. Or if you're someone that wants to focus more on crit draw, you can look at this set here and then change out things that you want. But this is what I currently went with. For the more critical side of the build, I went with critical I3 to negate some of the negative affinity, critical boost 2 to increase my weapon's critical damage multiplier, and critical draw 2 to increase my weapon's affinity draw attack by 60%. The critical draw skill is the main skill that will allow you to pull off the KO effect skill successfully, while also doing great damage when you're not doing a true charge attack as at best I found that I've varied from around 90 to 100 plus every time I land a hit onto a monster's weak point or if I land a hit onto a monster's head that is generally a weak point next for the following through with the quick uninterrupted attacks and moving quick I went with earplugs 5 for full roll negations quick sheath 2 so I can sheath and unsheath quickly 
and do a crit draw hit on a monster. Focus 2 for faster charge ups and speed sharpening 3 which allows me to sharpen my weapon quickly. Although it's really not needed depending on the weapon you're using since you won't be burning through your sharpness quickly. But this is kind of a knock on effect for using one of the Odegawa's pieces. And lastly we have set bonuses such as basal protection 3 which gives me the skill called guts which if I get hit by a heavy or unavoidable attack that would potentially kill me in one hit it will instead allow me to survive that one hit but only with one HP and can only be used once. We then have the Odegawa Mastery 2 which gives me a light boost in damage but the most important part is that it allows me to pull off a knockout effect onto a monster every time I do a draw attack. So this skill here combined with the impact mantle is what generally creates the whole set. So if you wanted to, you can probably change up some of the pieces to fit more of your playstyle, but this is kind of what I went with, and I found that it works pretty damn good. All of this added together should give us a total of 1104 base attack, 5% infinity, a defense of 389, and a very nice looking fashion set that is both practical and applicable when in action. If you plan on taking this build out onto the field against, say, Temple Monsters, then I highly, 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 highly recommend you augment your defense so you don't get taken out so easily out on the field. If not, then no biggie, as you use this as a on and off build to run with. Now when it comes down to using it out on the field, you're going to be doing the standard draw hits onto the monster and mainly aim at the monster's head as much as you can, but also staying as mobile as much as possible so that we can activate our KO effect much more quicker. You're not going to be standing around a lot to pull off a charge slash or a true charge slash as this basically goes against what the build is trying to achieve. And you won't be able to pull off the same effect that I do as shown in the video if you decide to go ahead and just do normal charge attacks on the monster because you're not guaranteed to always land a hit onto a monster's head. So follow what I do in the video and you should be a bit more successful. But once the monster is knocked out cold then you can go ahead and use your true charge slash or whatever attacks you want to pull off big numbers. At that point then the monster is vulnerable so you can do more damage and you can do a true charge, a normal charge attack or whatever attacks you want. When I do a normal draw hit onto a monster with say no charging or anything, I get around 100 plus damage every time I hit the monster's head or weak points. So overall you're going to be doing good damage when you do a hit and run tactic. I don't really focus on the damage I produce that much as I know most of my damage can be done when I do my charge attack once the monster is down. But if you're someone that wants more damage heading into the 100 to 200 ranges when you do a charge attack, then I recommend you change up a few of your skills so the damage output is more likely to get higher. For example, like switching out the crit draw skill for a weakness exploit max, or switching out focus for a attack charm, and then adding on a attack draw one for an overall attack four skill, which may be more beneficial as this, when combined with a true charge attack plus combo, can lead to higher numbers and quicker runs. But just be aware that if you do that, you're going to know some of the downsides that's going to come with it, especially if you take focus out, which will make you charge a whole lot more slower. So overall, the build is designed for layback runs and try not something new and not something to take too serious. But the overall enjoyment comes down to how many times you can KO a monster and question yourself as to why you can KO a monster with a great sword of all weapons rather than use something like a hammer or a hunting horn which are designed for KOing monsters. Is it good fun for running as a practical gag build? Yes. Yes it is. And I do hope the build can serve you well in the near future as the same way it did for me. And that comes to the end of the video, I do hope you enjoyed it, if you did then a like and a sub would be appreciated. Do you comment if there's anything you're confused with or would change and I'll try my best to help you. But once again thank you all for watching and I do hope to see you again soon.